Hi, it's Farmer Tom with Green Our Planet here, and I'm in this school garden doing a little inventory of what's growing. I'm in their orchard right now, and we have some apple trees. We have a lemon tree. We have some pomegranate trees, even some fig trees. And over here, we have our pollinator garden, full of native flowering plants that attract pollinators, such as bees and monarch butterflies. And here we have our vegetable beds. As you can see, they're doing great. We have our mini and cucumbers. You know, there's a lot of things this school could have done with this area. They could have put in asphalt and built a basketball court or a parking lot, but nothing grows in asphalt. And since there's no shade, it gets really, really hot in the summer, especially here in the desert. The school could have grown a grass field here or put in some landscaping, but grass takes a lot of water and landscaping takes a lot of maintenance to keep healthy. The school could have put garbage cans here, but garbage is ugly and smelly. And with these houses right across the street, who wants to look at garbage all day? There's a lot of things this school could have done with this area, but this school chose to build a school garden instead. Why do you think they did that? Is a school garden more important than, say, a parking lot? Have you ever thought of that? Let's go find out. Well first, let's take a look at the most obvious reason why to build a school garden. They grow things that we can eat. Most school gardens produce plants that produce the fruits and vegetables that we can eat. This one here has lemons and peppers, onions and, and even watermelon. Students can eat the food that's grown right here in their own school garden. And the schools can organize local student-run farmers markets. In Las Vegas alone, students organize over 200 farmers markets each year. Schools can also donate the produce to people in need, such as to food banks, which teaches the students an important lesson in helping others. And what better way to learn about nutrition than eating the vegetables grown right in the garden. Mm. Do you know how much nutrition the vegetables in a school garden contain if you pick them and eat them right away?
100%. That's because the school garden is just basically a little local mini farm. The garden also encourages us to create poetry and paintings so that we can share that garden's beauty with other people. I just pointed out that having a place for students to learn these things is important, but you might also say that this garden is a place that can make a big impact on the rest of the world. But how could a small school garden really affect the rest of the world? Could something so small compared to the Earth really make a big difference? The garden is a window into the greater natural world, or the environment that we live in. A school with a healthy garden is more likely to be visited by local animals and pollinators, providing food, water, and shelter for many of our local animal species. Let's just hope they don't eat our food. By promoting a healthy garden, and planting plants like the native milkweed, we can even help take care of animals such as the endangered monarch butterfly, which travel all the way from the Rocky Mountains to California each year, pollinating flowers everywhere in between. This impact that school gardens have isn't just limited to the space inside the garden. Just think of the air around the garden. As you know, when plants breathe out, they exhale fresh air, literally oxygen, which we need to breathe. So our garden is creating more oxygen every day. But what's even more important is that when the plants breathe in, they inhale any air pollution around them and actually filter the pollution out of the air. That's because plants breathe in carbon dioxide which is produced by cars and factories and causes air pollution. So plants exhale fresh oxygen and breathe in poisonous carbon dioxide. Why, that's a two for one fresh air deal. So what else can the plants in our school garden or in our fruit orchard give us? Can you name any? Well, besides the fresh air, all the growing plants create shade. And in the desert heat of Las Vegas, shade is very welcome. As the plants and fruit trees get bigger and bigger, the more shade they make. Meanwhile, the plant and tree roots spread out and hold on to that topsoil, keeping it from blowing away in the wind or washing away in the rain. Topsoil is important to retain because it contains all the nutrients. So, we get all of these benefits from just one school garden. But imagine all the benefits if more schools had gardens, and if they had fewer parking lots. What if the school garden movement went global, and every school in the world had a garden in which they could nurture nature and teach students? Imagine all these gardens in every school across your city, across the country, each providing habitat for local animals, feeding the community, and improving education. Imagine all of those vegetable plants and fruit trees growing, working together to filter the air, to take care of the soil, and to feed the hungry. Can you imagine the impact of all of that on our planet? Well, all of these plants and all the air that they clean and filter are a great way to help reduce our carbon footprint. Do you know what a carbon footprint is? Our carbon footprint is a measurement of how much carbon dioxide we put into the atmosphere from things like driving cars, powering our cities with electricity, or just having a barbecue. As the atmosphere fills up with more and more carbon dioxide, it will be harder and harder for humans and animals to breathe. And the environment will start to change. The more carbon dioxide that we put into the atmosphere, more of the sun's rays that it traps, causing the planet to warm up. This is called global warming. And as our planet warms, 
the plants and animals on it have a harder time to live and natural disasters like hurricanes become larger and more powerful. The more trees and plants that we grow, the more carbon dioxide and pollution is sucked up out of the atmosphere, and then more oxygen is produced. So by planting trees and gardens, each of us can help clean our air and help keep our planet cool. And finally, learning how to grow food is a lot of fun. Did you know that a hundred years ago, most people knew how to grow their own food? And did you know that nowadays, only about 2% of Americans grow food for all of the rest of us? So by learning how to grow food, we're learning a skill that our ancestors knew, but that most of us have forgotten. And besides, gardening can be a lifelong hobby. What students learn here will help them produce food for themselves and others forever. With new innovations in irrigation, hydroponics, and sustainable farming techniques already reshaping the world, learning to grow food might be a student's first step into having an exciting career. Did you know that astronauts are even growing vegetables in outer space? Do you know why? Because when we go to Mars, we can't go there without being able to grow our own food. So, the skills students learn today here in their garden might one day take them to colonies on other planets. I'm Farmer Tom with Green Our Planet, and I'll leave you with just a little homework assignment. The next time that you're outside, I want you to stop and think about where you might plant a fruit tree or even a small vegetable garden. All right, well, I'll see you next time. And remember, the Earth is the only planet in our solar system that has life on it, which is why the Earth is the only planet that has such beautiful blues and greens. So let's remember to protect our planet and all of the life on it. Bye.